Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Phil Calvert. Thank you so much for giving up your time today. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you're going to enjoy today's webinar on how to grow your business by attracting more clients through LinkedIn. Um, I'm extremely conscious that you are giving up your valuable time today. So um, because time is valuable, I'm going to give you something of a great deal of value, which hopefully you can take away and you can put in place straight away. So without further ado, let's get on and uh, see what we've got for you. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. However, what I'm uh, going to do today is I've, uh, I've heard most of the questions that usually get asked by financial advisors about LinkedIn before. So while we're planning to go for um, 60 minutes today, I'll probably do about 90 minutes. But don't worry, um, if you have to drop off at the 60 minute point, you will still get your CPD points. But feel free to ask any questions. If I don't actually ask them uh, throughout the presentation, uh, you're very welcome to get in touch with me direct and I will help you out. Now, um, hopefully to encourage you to stay for the full 90 minutes, um, I'm going to, at the end, ask a question, a quiz question. And if you'd like to email me the answer, and I'll give you the email address at the end, I will pick uh, one of the winning answers and I will send them something a little special and completely unique, of which I will tell you a little bit about later on. Uh, something else which you'll also be able to get as well, because if you're already on LinkedIn, um, you may or be, may not be having some success with it. Um, but again, if you stick around to the end, I will send you a link to a free LinkedIn health check. And you'll also get a LinkedIn planner as well, which asks you a few questions about how you currently use LinkedIn. And that will it'll give you a score at the end and you'll be able to see areas where you personally uh, can make some improvements little bit of a background about me. I don't want to uh, waste too much time doing introductions. You know how on and on and on they can go. Um, I spent 20 years doing sales and marketing with large product providers. I worked with Zurich Life, for example. Um, and after 20 years of doing that, um, I went self-employed. And so for the last 42 years, and it is 42 years to the day, today is the day that I started work. Uh, in the UK for uh, an insurance company called National Employers Life in Dorking in Surrey in the UK and I know there's at least one person watching this today who actually knows Dorking quite well. Um, I've always been absolutely fascinated in how IFAs, financial advisors, wealth managers, financial planners and the wider financial services industry markets and promotes itself and I've got some interesting observations that I've noticed over the years. Uh, I created the world's first online social networking platform in financial services. It was a group on a very, very early version of LinkedIn, a website called eCademy. I don't know if any of you remember that. Uh, it was around long before LinkedIn came around. And it was the first place online that financial advisors could to hang out, ask questions, uh, talk about providers, uh, get technical questions answered. Uh, and I still do that today. I've written 20 books. Uh, I used to be a rock concert photographer. Um, back in my teens, early 20s, I used to get a press pass to all the gigs. Um, but my dad said, no, you can't do that. You've got to get a proper job. Uh, so I ended up working in the insurance company. And at one point, I held the um, recognition I had the award for the making the world's best gin and tonic. Yep, I actually, uh, I learned how to do it. Uh, it's too long a story to tell you here, but I learned how to make the perfect gin and tonic from uh, somebody in the Tankery family. Uh, and I entered uh, the World Cocktail Making Championships quite a few years ago in London. Barmen and women from around the world came along and I won the gin and tonic category. So I'm imagining that some of you are thinking, could we talk about gin and tonic for the next 90 minutes? Unfortunately, we can't, but that's for a, another occasion. Okay, let me introduce you to this gentleman. This is Ernest Charles Prudence. What a fantastic name. He was an entrepreneur. He was an expert at what he did. Uh, he was a passionate golfer and he loved networking, absolutely loved networking. If Ernest was on LinkedIn today, 
His profile would say that he was the managing director of the new Pelopone engine company in Leeds in the north of England. Ernest was in fact an engineer, an engineer of considerable global repute. And he invented many things that we're familiar with today. He invented the dimmer switch. He invented hydraulics. He invented the dishwasher. Don't we just love Ernest Prudence? He invented the dishwasher. Ernest, as I said, was a great, great networker. And two of the people he used to network with were actually close personal friends of his. Uh, the gentleman on the left actually lived next door to him in Surrey in the United Kingdom. And the gentleman on the left there is Sir Barnes Wallace, the man who invented the bouncing bomb during the Second World War. He was an engineer, Ernest, and he used to talk in their garden uh, about engineering, as you do. Um, and the gentleman on the right, quite a bit earlier in Ernest's career, is John Logie Baird, the man who basically invented television. And Ernest Prudence was one of a very, very small number of scientists and engineers who were actually in the same room with Logie Baird the day that he first presented television. So Ernest was a great networker. He was an expert subject matter. Yes, he loved his golf. And Ernest was also my grandfather. I never met him. He died before uh, I was born. Um, and But one thing that he always used to pass on throughout the family was however an expert you are at your subject, and you can have all the exams in the world, um, but the key thing is people by people. And I'm sure you've heard that expression before. And one of the things about social media is we tend to think that the technology will do all the work. When actual fact, the technology is really just a tool to help people by people. And we'll explain a bit more about that as we go along. So let's look typically uh, at how financial advisors attract new business. So I've been working with financial advisors for 42 years, and I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, to be quite honest. This is how it used to happen. If you were at a party or you were in a bar uh, before the internet came along, we're at a party or in a bar or a dinner party, something like that, and round the table, the topic of personal finances came up. And maybe you, you'd say, you know, I, I really could do with a financial advisor. I need to get my investments sorted out. And there'd always be someone around the table say, oh, well, check out my financial advisor at Jones & Co. They're absolutely fantastic. You ought to talk to them. And back then, that was good enough. We go, oh, thank you so much for that referral. And you would write Jones & Co. down on the napkin. And the next day, what would you do? You'd phone them up. Today, it's a little bit different. Yeah, we're at the party. We're in the bar. The topic of personal finance comes up. Oh, I, I, need some, I need a really good financial advisor right now. And there'd always be someone around the table who'd say, well, you want to check out my financial advisor, Smith & Co. They're fantastic. And what you would do is you write Smith & Co. down on the napkin. But the next day, you don't phone them up. The next day, we do something different, don't we? We tend to go online. We go on to Google. We probably go on to LinkedIn as well. Because we want to check out that Smith & Co. actually exists. We want to have a look at their photos. Yeah, we want to know that they're qualified, but we want to know, do we like the look of these people? Simple human things like that. Do we like the look of these people? Have we got a good vibe about this particular person? But an interesting thing happens. So while we're on there, we might find Smith & Co's website, but what we'll also find is several other financial advisors' websites as well. And we're going to get distracted. We've looked at Smith & Co's website, and we might even find Jones & Co's website. We might find somebody else's and somebody else's. And then we might even find a blog, or we might find a YouTube channel. We'll find information that we are looking for. And there is a good chance today that we won't actually go with a real financial advisor. We might actually go with information that's freely available on the internet. Now, some of that information that's being put on the internet is actually from financial advisors, but nothing like as much as there could be. Um, and, you know, a lot of consumers out there are being educated on personal finance matters by journalists. Um, and that really shouldn't be the case. The people who should be educating people on personal finance should actually be 
financial advisors, wealth managers, financial planners. So things are changing. And this idea that we can continue to rely on referrals, I think uh, we're on rocky ground there. Now, I've done some research into what sort of marketing does actually work for financial advisors. Um, I've also looked at the research that Michael Kitzes has done over the United States. And what we tend to see for the top marketing strategies for top performing financial advisors tends to be what we're looking at on the left there, referrals, publishing, published books, seminars and events, web listings, introducers, LinkedIn, search engine optimization, and a couple of other things as well. There are other strategies that work for new advisors or financial advisors that maybe need a bit of a help. Maybe they're struggling a little bit. Maybe they're looking for some new ideas. And those strategies tend to be referrals, top of the list, introducers, local advertising, paid web listing, seminars and events. You can see that appearing there. Networking events, LinkedIn, content. So that'll be blogs, podcasts, articles, that sort of thing published books starting to appear and become more and more important to financial advisors and good old fashioned old school non digital advertising advertising on roundabouts we've got a financial advisor just up the road from us here who advertises on a roundabout and he has been doing that for the last 10 years he says probably 20,000 people see his advert every single day as they go around the roundabout so simple old school stuff really really works but you can see there that there are some things that are common to both lists. And increasingly, what we're beginning to notice is that the content and the marketing strategies that are most effective for financial advisors are, is marketing activity that has an educational element to it. Um, so really, top of that list will be seminars, seminars and client events, in my book is the single most effective method for financial advisors to attract high quality new clients. Now I can convince any financial advisor they should be putting on a seminar, but in the back of their head they're thinking, oh, what if no one turns up? Uh, isn't it going to be expensive? That's just a process which you can follow. But the point I'm making is it's an educational activity, but there's something else that's really important. If you're standing up in front of a group of people, or even you're putting on a webinar like this, people get to see the whites of your eyes. People buy people. If you're sitting in a seminar room and a financial advisor starts their presentation, the first thing that happens is that you make very human decisions at the back of your mind. Do I like this person? Was the breakfast any good? That kind of stuff. Is the, it's the human, people by people. And that is the thread that I want to run throughout today's presentation about how we use LinkedIn. If referrals is your thing, but you want to get more referrals and you want to get better referrals, please can I refer you to this particular book, Get More Referrals Now, by a gentleman called Bill Cates. He's in the United States, but Bill is probably the world's leading expert on referrals and introductions for financial advisors strongly recommend uh, that you get that book um, because if, if you already get referrals great and it seems that most financial advisors do but if you want even better quality referrals this is the book that you should get okay so marketing for financial advisors you know if we listen to marketers today many will have you believe that this is the approach that we should be taking yeah we should be everywhere omnipresent we should have our website we should have our own facebook group we should be doing online courses yes we should be putting on events we should write a book we should have a facebook group we should be on instagram youtube podcast yeah we hear this all of the time the simple fact of the matter is this kind of approach simply is not sustainable certainly not over the long term really when it comes to marketing it comes down to who is your absolute ideal dream client? And then focus on the marketing areas, the marketing activities, the tools and the tactics that are appropriate to that particular market. This scattergun approach here simply doesn't work. This idea that we should constantly be putting free content out onto the internet is not sustainable. Yes, some content some high quality high value content that is directly relevant to our target markets so that when people are searching google and so on our content surfaces 
but I think we devalue our expertise as financial advisors by putting too much content in too many different places. So I'm not a great fan of this particular approach. And one of the things that, that advisors ask me all of the time is, Phil, I see Jones and Co down the road, they're using Twitter, perhaps we should give that a go. And Smith and Co down the road, they're using YouTube, perhaps we should give that a go. And somebody else down the road, they're using Facebook, maybe we should give that a go. Guess what? Give that a go is not a plan, it's not a strategy. Tweet and hope is not a plan. Well, it could be a plan, but it's not a very good plan. And really what I'm trying to say with this is that we seem to believe that it's the technology that is doing the work. If I use that tool, we'll get business. If I use that tool, we'll get new introductions. It doesn't work like that. Social media, in particular LinkedIn, has nothing to do with technology. Nothing at all. But it has everything to do with technique how you use it, how we use it so that people can buy into us as people, as individuals, as experts. So it's all about technique, it's nothing to do with technology. And LinkedIn particularly is really keen to get this message across that it doesn't want to be seen as a technology platform. Um, when I created the first online platform for financial advisors, the word social media didn't exist. This would have been back in 2002, 2003. Social media as we know it today didn't exist. We called it social networking. Why do we call it social networking? Because we were networking online, interacting, engaging, communicating with other human beings, helping them out, supporting them. You know, the best type of networkers at real life networking events are the people who go with the sole intention of giving as much help and advice with the expectation of getting nothing in return. Far too many people use social media to just broadcast noise saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. They are no different from the people who go to a networking event and who sneak into the room before everybody else and put a business card on all the chairs before everybody gets in. And LinkedIn rewards people for networking on the platform rather than broadcasting on the platform and we'll explain a bit more about that as we go so you know when i if, if i was with you now live in south africa which we had originally planned to do uh one of the first things i would do is to say put your hands up if you are on linkedin and almost everybody at every conference i ever speak at when i say put your hands up if you're on linkedin everybody puts their hands up i then say okay great now put your hands up if you know why you're on LinkedIn. And I get like five, four, five hands go up. So we're all on LinkedIn, but the vast majority aren't really sure why we're on LinkedIn. And you know, for, for most people, we absolutely waste our time. You know, whether you use the app, whether you go onto the desktop version, you go onto LinkedIn, you see the news feed scrolling down and it's kind of relevant to you. Then you see the little red dot at the top right ankle. Well, I mean, somebody sent me a message. Somebody wants to connect with me. So we have a look and we see some people want to connect with us. Then we agonize, should I be connecting? Is it a good idea to connect with people I don't really know? Then we might put a status update. Then we might comment on someone else's. Then we might wander around, have a look in a group for a while. We just mess around on LinkedIn. We need to have a plan. I guarantee you, if you do nothing else as a result of today's webinar, write down why you want, why you're on LinkedIn. What are you trying to achieve? Now, if you want new clients or more of the right clients, then that's your plan. It could be that easy. And I'll give you a specimen plan that I use in just a minute. So we've got to stop wasting time um, because that's exactly what's going on. There are still a lot of people who, who believe that LinkedIn is little more than a fancy job site. And, you know, they still make a lot of their money uh, doing that. So yes, it's a job site, but it is so much more. In fact, I'm just going to put all of these up here. This is what LinkedIn is today. Yeah, it's a job site. It's a networking platform. It's a blogging platform. It's a classified ad service, it's a Rolodex, it's a sales tool, it's a corporate PR site. Go take a look at the in eight uh, company page on LinkedIn. They put some great stuff on there. So what's, what's going on here? Well, Microsoft, who own LinkedIn, the key strategy, what they're trying to do here is to make LinkedIn an indispensable business tool. So that if you are on LinkedIn, you won't need for anything else. You can even get the news on LinkedIn today. 
uh, they're trying to make it absolutely indispensable so that you don't feel that you need to leave the site to go and do something else. And the LinkedIn algorithm rewards you for using the various features of the platform. One of the main ways it rewards you is it makes you high, it puts you higher in the search results on LinkedIn, or it makes your posts more visible to more people. So LinkedIn is anything you want it to be. Key to that though, is that it's a search engine and people often forget that LinkedIn is the people and expertise search engine and right now there are people on LinkedIn who are searching for the expertise that you have got as financial advisors as wealth managers they're doing it right now if you're on LinkedIn you should be receiving inquiries out of the blue from complete strangers people who have searched LinkedIn for your expertise but they've chosen for whatever reason or the algorithm for whatever reason has made sure that you don't show up. So what I'm going to do is to show you today some tips to make sure that you do get shown up so that you do appear in the search engine because there's a lot of people on LinkedIn and there's a lot of financial advisors on LinkedIn. Um, so we want to make sure that when somebody is searching for expertise that you have, that, that the algorithm picks you out or at least picks you out amongst others, but puts you high up in the search results. That's really, really key. The problem with many, many financial advisors around the world is we all look the same. Um, and we all say the same things on our website. I can do a party piece at conferences where I can write the About Us page for any financial advisor's website, and I can do it without ever having met them. And I can do that because they all say the same thing. We are all lookalikes. You go down any high street, any city, in any town, one firm of accountants looks the same as another firm of accountants. One firm of lawyers looks the same as another firm of lawyers, yeah? One firm of financial advisors looks the same as another firm of financial advisors. And you might say, well, Phil, that's, that's not very fair. We are different from Jones & Co. down the road. And I'm sure you are, but on the outside, on your website, on your LinkedIn profile, you will say the same things. None of us can afford to be lookalikes except the lady on the right, who is a professional paid lookalike, paid to look like Audrey Hepburn, to stand on booths at conferences so people can have a selfie taken with her. None of you guys and girls are paid to look and behave like other financial advisors. And it's really important that we stop behaving and looking like each other. Very important. So as I just said, you should be getting leads out of the blue from complete strangers. If you're on LinkedIn, you are marketing yourself full stop. And if you're not receiving those inquiries, then arguably you're not marketing yourself as well as you could be. So this is how it all starts. You set up your profile on LinkedIn and you put a few keywords into your profile, financial planner, wealth manager, pensions expert, those kind of things there. Maybe you do some, some activity on LinkedIn, a few comments, maybe you put your own status updates, whatever. And maybe you're using a few hashtags as well. We'll explain more about hashtags later. Then along comes somebody on LinkedIn, because you are now in the search engine. The algorithm could potentially pick you out. And so there are people on LinkedIn looking for people like you. So they do their search on LinkedIn. And let's say for sake of argument, you appear top of the search results. So what will happen next is they'll get in contact with you through a variety. They might want to just look at your profile or they might send you a connection request. They might even send you a message, something like that. That's typically what happens on LinkedIn. And then the next thing that happens is you exchange a few messages and in another, another time, you'd end up in a coffee shop or in a bar. That's how it goes. It's extremely unlikely that you will actually secure a new client simply through the messaging system on LinkedIn. At some point, we've got to revert to the normal stuff that we do all the time. Have a phone call, go on Skype, go on Zoom, go on Zoom, have a coffee. At some point, that has to happen. So a key strategy for most financial advisors is appear visible, connect and interact and communicate with people, have a few messages, but get them off LinkedIn and get them onto Zoom or into a coffee shop or into a bar. That's really the main plan for financial advice. And if that meeting goes well and they end up becoming a client, we then progress to a champagne bar at some point. Okay, it's super clear, it's super important that your profile shows clearly that who your ideal client is. In other words, who you are serving, 
who you have expertise in dealing with. And you really got to be crystal clear about who your perfect dream client is. And you've got to write your profile for that. Now, if you've got a crystal clear view of who your dream client is, you will know what they're worried about today. You'll know what they're thinking about today. Yeah, you'll know what turns them on, what excites them, what motivates them. If you know your client and your ideal client that well. In marketing speak, they call it your perfect ideal client avatar. I never knew why they call it that, but that's what it is. And your profile needs to be written so that if these people arrive on your profile, it looks like you're speaking directly to them. Okay, so LinkedIn's got a lot of people on there. It's still dwarfed by Facebook. Facebook's still the all dominant social networking platform. But since all sorts of problems and privacy issues and election questions on, uh, on Facebook, more and more professionals are realizing that perhaps LinkedIn is the place to be. Unfortunately, we're on LinkedIn, but we're not sure why we're on LinkedIn. So let's try and get under the hood of that. Now, first of all, compared with Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking platforms, all the stats time and time again show that after looking at your LinkedIn profile, you are far more likely to end up in a conversation that will lead to some business actually being done. Um, and compared with Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore, making professional connections, LinkedIn's way ahead. Improving the effectiveness of your referral network, LinkedIn way ahead. Building your brand identity, way ahead. Cultivating prospects, way ahead. Expanding your professional knowledge, way ahead, way ahead, way ahead. At every level, LinkedIn wins over these other platforms. At every level. Now, when you ask people who are really crushing it on LinkedIn, how actually has the, has the site helped you? Um, and here's the list, but I just want to focus on the, on the top three. The number one way that LinkedIn has helped people who are really winning on LinkedIn is through research. So in other words, they're using it as a search engine. To reconnect with past associates and colleagues, that's an interesting one. Plenty of people I'd rather not reconnect with, but people are doing that. Never forget the people you used to know, the people you used to work with, because they could potentially introduce you to other people and you could introduce them to other people. And here we go, build relationships with people who could influence potential customers. Now, there's a really interesting thing. That is suggesting that the people we engage with on LinkedIn one-to-one -one may not actually end up becoming clients of ours. But what's more likely to happen is that they will refer us to their friends. So it's the second and third degree question uh, relationships that are really, really powerful here. So if people buy into you, it makes it much more likely that they will recommend you to their friends, their colleagues, and so on. So your prospects are already on LinkedIn, full stop, okay? So your job is to find them or help them to find you by appearing high in the search results, get their attention, and then start a conversation. That is the primary LinkedIn strategy that is all important on this particular site. So let's Let's open up the hood and see what we can find underneath. LinkedIn fundamentally is made up of three core themes and 10 core elements. The three core themes are identity and reputation at a personal to corporate level, networking, in other words, building your own network, but also connecting and introducing other people together, and knowledge. You're sharing your own knowledge, but also learning new knowledge as well. Those are the three core themes underneath what's going on there. The 10 core elements, your personal page, company page, there's also a thing called showcase pages, which a great deal of people have never heard of before. LinkedIn groups, you may be members, we'll talk on that a bit more. The content that you post, that you share, that you share on LinkedIn. SlideShare is like a social network for PowerPoint presentation. Imagine YouTube, but just for PowerPoint presentations. Yep, such a thing exists and it's owned by LinkedIn. And you can share content that's on slide share onto LinkedIn. Contacts, jobs, advertising, sales, volunteering, and learning. Now, the more bits of LinkedIn that you use, the more elements that you use on LinkedIn, the more LinkedIn rewards you. It rewards you by putting you higher in the search results and making your content more visible. But for most financial advisors, they're only using the top one there, personal page maybe the company page as well. 
So we want to start looking at some of the other things as well. Obviously, you can't use all of them. Maybe you're not looking for a job. Maybe you're not got jobs to advertise. So you can't use that. But the more of those bits that you use, the more LinkedIn rewards you. But all of these things still are underpinned by the search engine. So we need to have a plan. Uh, a plan is so, so important. And a plan can be as simple as something that's written on the back of an envelope, to be quite honest. And it could be as simple as this. Write down, why are you on LinkedIn? What are you trying to achieve? How are you measuring results? It, it can be that simple. Now, let me, let me show you my LinkedIn plan. And yeah, I could get this on the back of an envelope. In fact, my LinkedIn plan is this simple. It is to attract speaking and training business and to sell books. That's it. That's why I'm on LinkedIn. To do that, I need to be visible where my clients and targets are. So for example, the sort of people that book me to speak will be conference organizers, uh, event planners, people like that. And they are all on LinkedIn in their tens of thousands. Now I can just use the search engine every day and I can go sending messages to all of them. But if all I do is I go into sales mode and I go, are you looking for a speaker? Are you looking for a speaker? They're not gonna be in the slightest bit interest. I've gotta get them to buy into me first. And that usually means helping them first before they start paying attention to me. Next thing I do is I just want to try and start some conversations with these people. How are you today? What's going on in your business that's, that's big at the moment? Could I introduce you to anyone from my network who could help you? I try to give with the expectation of getting nothing in return. Simple conversations like that. And then at some point, remember I said we've got to get them into a coffee bar? That's the point. And the sort of people I'm actually targeting on LinkedIn are conference organizers, meeting planners, financial advisors, advisors suppliers to financial advisors. I also do work in schools as well. And I've also done work with um, Indian tourism professionals. So these are the kind of people that I'm looking for on LinkedIn. That's my plan. You know, you could all put a plan together like that in 10 minutes. Simple as that. And I promise you, you do that. It'll give you so much more focus the next time you're on LinkedIn. This idea that you'll be messing around, not quite sure what to do, they'll be gone forever because you've got a plan. Okay, we've got to start those conversations that take people to our, our value ladder. What do I mean by a value ladder? Well, it's, it's this. People are arriving on our LinkedIn profile or they're arriving on our website and we're expecting them to go from never heard of you before to working closely, to reveal their financial details, their personal financial history. That's a big ask in today's internet world. And something we really need to be conscious of. And I think we can learn from other professionals as to how we can build a value ladder. So let's take dentists, yeah? Um, a lot of dentists these days, they just want to get you in the building so they can get you to experience them their expertise, their value, get to know you, get to like you, get to trust you, yeah? So quite a lot of dentists these days, they do free teeth cleaning just to get you in the building. And quite a lot of them will even do free teeth whitening. I mean, there was a time where teeth whitening would have been the top of a value ladder, really expensive. These days, teeth whitening, to a penny, yeah? So quite often, free teeth cleaning or free teeth whitening just to get you in the building. They give it to you free. They look after you, treat you like a king or a queen. They get a video testimonial off you. And it just makes it so much more likely that you're going to go up the next step and maybe move on to some cosmetic dentistry. And here's the thing, teeth whitening and teeth cleaning doesn't even need to be done by the actual dentist uh, themselves anymore. Someone else can do that. Um, well, let's look at another example. What about a chiropractor? You know, they do similar things as well. They just want to get you in the building so they can get to know you. And typically, you might get a free consultation. You might even get a free massage as well. But what they're really trying to do is get to the point where you go, you know, I like you so much. I'm more than happy to fork out a lot of money to go on your weekend wellness retreat with yoga and meditation and really nice food and so forth. That's where the big money is for the chiropractors, yeah? What about a gym? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious that the, the value ladder for a gym usually starts on what day of the year? January the 1st. That's right. They get you in the building, free trial. What they really want you to do ultimately is to have personal trainers, yeah, to, to fork out the big money. So what do we think about the value ladder for financial advisor? Well, 
the vast majority of financial advisors don't have a value ladder. They don't have anything that gets people in the building. And uh, trust me, a free news, email newsletter is not part of a value ladder, yeah? And we could be doing so much more to get people in the building, to get, a, to, get to know us, to get to like us, to get to trust us, to build that relationship, yeah? So that's you know, something to think about as you move forward. So let me ask you the question. The single biggest mistake that financials make, financial advisors make on LinkedIn, what do you think that is? Have a think just for a moment. What do you think the single biggest mistake is that financial advisors make on LinkedIn? Wonder what that is. Okay. Not fully completing their profile. And the emphasis is on the word fully. Do this one thing. Fully complete your profile. And there's a, there's a right way to do it. There's a wrong way to do it. We'll come on to that. Fully complete your profile. If you do nothing else as a result of this webinar today, fully complete your profile. Spend some time doing this. Uh, it might take you, you maybe just need to do a bit of brushing up. But then again, you might do need to do a complete rethink. It could take you a couple of hours. But it's worth doing this because as soon as you fully complete your profile, you will immediately shoot up the search results for certain keywords immediately. And you'll see a dramatic and immediate jump in your search positioning when you fully complete your profile. And LinkedIn's even got some stats that says users with complete profiles are 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn. Um, and to me, that feels a bit right. I would think it's actually slightly higher than 40 times, to be quite honest. Other mistakes financial advisors make, not putting their contact details on it. I mean, why wouldn't you put your contact details on there? Not engaging with other people, not doing the human thing and forgetting this concept that people buy people. It is so, so important that you remember these things. So when I say fully complete your profile, this is the job that you have to do. Now, I know some people say, oh, this is all going to be rather time consuming, but trust me, this is worth it. Once you've done this and put in place your plan, you could then spend as little as a couple of minutes a day, literally two minutes a day, five minutes a day on LinkedIn, and you will see a dramatic improvement in your experience of the platform. So all these bits, now some of these bits, you may never have even seen these. Yes, some of these sections on your LinkedIn profile aren't immediately obvious. Now, if your profile is not fully complete, quite often LinkedIn gives you a bit of a prompt at the top of your profile to encourage you to fill out more and more sections. Some of the sections feel a bit Americanized, but you know, just kind of go with the flow. So these are all the bits that you need to be completing. And you'll start appearing high in search results. Other things that you could do to appear high in search results are build a large network. And I know a lot of financial advisors, one of the most common questions I get from advisors, is, should I connect, who should I connect with? Now, in the real world, if we were network, if LinkedIn didn't exist, and we, were, oh, we could only ever meet and network in the real world, it, you could argue that a, a small focused niche network is the way to go forward. But on LinkedIn, they reward you for being well connected. So their definition of well connected is actually slightly different from what you might already know it to be. They mean connect with a lot of people, connect with a lot of people. If you're well connected, LinkedIn rewards you. Put hashtags in posts, we'll come on to that engage with other people's content and it could be as simple as saying great post sue thanks for the heads up just do something like that it's one of the single best strategies on linkedin is just to do short comments on other people's posts great post john thanks for that that's all you need to do linkedin will reward you for doing that because you are sending a signal to the linkedin algorithm that you are a networker and not a broadcaster engage with other people's content and decide on your keywords. We'll come on to keywords. Another really nice benefit of having a fully completed profile on LinkedIn is that you will start to appear high in Google search results. If I type in my name into Google, um, my LinkedIn profile, uh, sorry, my website comes up top, uh, the governor of Maryland uh, comes up second, but my LinkedIn profile comes up in third places. It kind of chops and changes every day, but fully complete your profile but and your LinkedIn profile will appear high in Google search results, which is really useful. Okay, let's look at your profile now and let's get under the skin of it because this is really, really important. What we don't want to happen is people falling asleep when they see our profile. So I have devised 
uh, a kind of benchmark for um, LinkedIn profiles, which I'm going to explain in a second. So you've got to ask yourself, does it capture attention immediately? Have you written it in a way that shows that you empathize with your, empathize with your visitors' problems? Does it communicate in a tone that's unique to you? Are you keeping away unnecessary jargon? I would argue that financial advisors actually need to have some jargon on their profile because some people are searching for that jargon. And is there a good old fashioned call to action? So all, everything has to be underpinned by this. Your profile has got to give off a sense of who you are as a person. So this is my profile test. This is the benchmark that I have created that profiles need to come up to. If you take my LinkedIn health check, when, we see the, when you see the link at the end, uh, you'll get a sense of, of how good your profile actually is. So my benchmark for LinkedIn profiles is, yep, it's got to be irresistible. Now, you might have noticed earlier that I said I do some work for, with schools. My wife is a careers lead in a large school um, and she hires speakers. She quite often hires financial advisors to, to come in and talk. And so she uses LinkedIn quite a lot. And I said to her, you know, what, what makes a profile irresistible to you? And I actually sent her an email, said, look, I'm doing this presentation can you give me some examples of some profiles that you would say are irresistible? And 20 minutes after I sent her this email, she, she replies, she sends me an email, but there's nothing written in the email. There's just an, an image attached. And I opened up the image and that is what she attached to her email. Half an hour later, she sends me another email with this picture attached to her email. Half an hour after that, I get this one from her. Still no text, no words, nothing in there. And then finally she sends me this one. She says, I, I like this game. So I, I get it what irresistible might mean at one particular level, okay? So what I wanna show you now is a real LinkedIn profile. And we're gonna try and see if it comes up to the, the test, the irresistible bar that I have set, okay? So I'm gonna show you this, the photo from a LinkedIn profile and you be the judge. So here we go. Take a look at that picture and have a, have a think. Soak him up in all his glory. At a gut human level, let me ask you, how do you feel about this person? I mean, you don't even know his name. For all we know, that picture could have been taken in a police station. But how do you feel about this person? Now, the kind of research that I've done with certainly with live audiences is that the majority of people have a good feeling about this person. Yeah, he looks nice enough, nice smile going on there. Um, we don't even know what he does. We don't even know his name, but for the most part, we think, yeah, he looks okay. Now, there's a lesson straight away about profile photos, okay? We don't even know what he does. We don't even know his name, but most people quite like the look of him. So, this is art. And Art runs an office supplies outlet in the United States, in Milwaukee, I think it is, yeah? And Art figures that every office supplies outlet in the world all look the same. They're all lookalikes, just like I mentioned earlier. They all sell the same stuff. The pricing strategy is just a race to the bottom. And he says, that can't be sustainable for the long term. We have to differentiate in another world. So let's have a look at his profile. These are some of the things that Art has actually written on his LinkedIn profile. Have a look at those while I grab some water. So this is interesting, this is different, and there's more. So one of two things is happening here. Number thing number one, he's either just taking the Mickey out of the whole LinkedIn system, and that's fine. There's plenty of people who do that on LinkedIn. I actually collect funny LinkedIn profiles. Or the other thing that could be happening is perhaps he's the real deal. Perhaps this is how he stands out from the crowd. And this guy is amazing. Uh, so he's using humor. He's using himself as his differentiator, not his pricing, not the size of the sign on the outside of the building. He's using himself. Now, Art also has an online service as well, but he tells me no one uses it because people would rather get in their pickup trucks and drive two or three hours 
to his outlet in the hope that he'll actually be there that particular day. People buy people, always have done and always will do, and they do online. Now I get it, this is a fairly extreme example. And what I'm not saying is that I'm saying financial advisors right now should start larking about being funny, wearing spinning bow ties on their LinkedIn profiles. What I'm saying is just get something of ourselves onto our profile, something of our story, something of how we came to be who we are today. That is what people buy into, simple as that. Now, I've had a look at the list of financial advisors who are attending today's webinar, and I've had a quick look at your profiles. And this is what I see on your profiles. These are the words that are on your profiles. Now, they don't quite jump off the page like the words on Art's page. Actually, I haven't looked at your profiles, but I've looked at thousands of financial advisors' profiles, and these are the words that are on their profiles. We can all probably tick off a few of these. Where does it look like these words actually belong? Yeah, a CV. LinkedIn is not a CV repository. LinkedIn is a real-time networking platform. So we all look the same on our websites. We're all using the same words on our LinkedIn profile. Something's got to change if we're actually going to get some business out of using this particular platform. So just a couple of tips before we move on. Write it in the first person. Stop doing this John has been a financial advisor for 25 years. He's a certified financial planner and he's an expert in investments and inheritance. We all know that you wrote it, John. Okay. Write it in the first person. It looks, just looks silly when it's written in anything other than first. Make it punchy. Yeah. Uh, get people's attention. Tell a story. Make sure your punctuation is correct. Start with something that people might have heard before. Music is my first love, but if it is, yeah. I'll give you an example of, of somebody else later who uses that really well. Write your profile with your client, your ideal client in mind. Be assertive. Contact me now. It's fine to do that. Get a bit of personality in there. Get some pictures on there. Get some video on there. Get some PowerPoint slides on there. You can put all kinds of media on your profile now. And, you know, you, if you were a chiropractor on LinkedIn, you could get away with saying this on your profile. Do you suffer from chronic elbow pain? Chiropractors know perfectly well that people looking at their profile are suffering from some sort of chronic pain. They know that. They know their clients. They know what they're worried about. So they put that and they reflect that on their LinkedIn profile. Yeah. So your LinkedIn profile is not a CV. It is you. It is your expertise. It is your reputation. It is your credibility. It is the person that people want to buy into. Use it to demonstrate the value you bring equally. Your LinkedIn profile is not a circus poster. Some might argue that art's profile is verging on circus poster territory, but it works for him. The testimonials for art's business are off the scale. Well, first time I discovered art, uh, I looked at his profile, smiled at it. Yeah, about half an hour later, I got an email back from him saying, dear Mr. Social Media Guy, thanks for looking at my profile today. I hope you found something of interest. Uh, if you're ever in my area, please pop in and we'll have one of my famous lunches. Then he added, uh, maybe you're looking for how not, maybe you're doing a presentation on how not to put together a LinkedIn profile. Feel free to use anything. And I thought that was really nice. He doesn't know me from Adam, but he was interacting with me. He was engaging with me at a human level. That's what it's about. Yeah. Okay. So let's do something else. We don't need to actually do this exercise right now because I'm conscious of time. But do this exercise as well, and it will make an immediate and measurable difference to your visibility on LinkedIn. One thing you need to do is write down a dozen keywords. Ten will be fine. If you're in a very niche market, five or six will be fine. But see if you can come up with a dozen keywords. And by that, I mean words that you think people might type into the LinkedIn search box. Words that if they type that in the LinkedIn search box, would lead to your profile appearing in the search results. So you want to try and come up with 10 or 12, and a keyword could be financial planner in Cape Town. That could be one keyword, okay? So you can be fluid with this. Then what you need to do is you need to number these 12 keywords in order of importance. So the single most important keyword to you is number one. Then you need to take the top five keywords and have them tattooed on your heart. You don't want to do that. Just print them out, be fine. But you want to get those top five keywords 
and you want to try and add them into as many sections of your LinkedIn profile. Do you remember all those sections I showed you earlier? Try and get your top five keywords into every single one of those sections if you possibly can do it. Just doing that exercise will make an immediate and measurable difference. And take your time over it as well. Uh, ask colleagues, if you have colleagues, ask them what keywords they think you should be using, yeah? There are some other keywords that you might, you might want to be thinking about as well. Keywords related to the services that you offer. Keywords related to technical, technical skills that you might have. Keywords related to industries that you target. Maybe some jargon keywords as well. Maybe some business skills and also location as well. As I said, wealth management in Johannesburg. That is one keyword. So that's an exercise to think about doing. I strongly recommend you do it because it will make a difference. I guarantee you. Then you want to choose some hashtags. Now, hashtags are, well, there are there, as you can see, hashtags fulfill two purposes. You can write a bit of content, you can write a post on LinkedIn, then you can add a relevant hashtag afterwards. That makes that post that you wrote appear in search results for pensions. It's as, that, it's as simple as that, okay? So maybe you went for a run first thing this morning and you go onto LinkedIn or maybe you go onto Twitter and you said, morning run done, feeling great, ready to face the day, and you put hashtag fitness, hashtag smug, whatever you want, whatever you want to put. Hashtags add emphasis to what you've written, but they also make sure that people searching for the word fitness on social networking platforms, your post is much more likely to appear in their feed. So you want to choose about three primary hashtags related to your expertise, and you want to use those hashtags in posts and comments and status updates that you uh, use on LinkedIn. You don't need to put those on your profile, it makes no difference. Okay, now uh, one thing that you need to do also is, or you can consider doing, you don't have to, but to customize your LinkedIn address, your LinkedIn URL. You can see that I've taken my name out and I've actually replaced it with keywords. So if a conference organizer is looking for a keynote speaker or a sales speaker, by me doing that, makes it more likely that I will appear high in their search results, okay? Um, and then you can print that on your business cards and you should have your LinkedIn URL on your business cards these days, you really should. Now the LinkedIn privacy settings and the technical settings are quite extensive. You have to dig around to find that setting, but it's in there, okay? And they move them around uh, as well. Okay, next thing we want to look at is what's called your professional headline. That's the bit underneath your name. Now, what do you notice about my professional headline there? First of all, LinkedIn has recently increased the number of characters that you can use. Um, so even if you've got just like a one-liner in there, you've now got about three or four lines that they'll let you use as well. But look what it says there. With challenging times upon us, are you looking for more business leads? Well, I know that my target markets are looking for more business leads. So that's why I've written that there. Now is the time to finally learn how to leverage LinkedIn. Ask about my proven online remote LinkedIn lead generation training. So I know my target market is looking for more leads. Many are thinking, should I be using LinkedIn? And I'll find them on LinkedIn, they'll see that. And it makes it quite difficult to not want to engage with me as we move forward. Another way you can do this is to ask a question directly at your primary target market. Are you looking for a high content LinkedIn expert and profit producing sales speaker for your next conference or event? Now I was using that before the whole, the whole coronavirus thing as well, when we were still doing live conferences, but I know that my target market will respond to that. What else do you notice about it? I've also capitalized the first letter of each word. Now, that is a simple copywriting technique that you do that it just makes it look a bit more important than it actually is but it's proven to engage with people a little bit more now jeremy here is a financial planner in the uk he's actually put a keyword in his name um there's a little bit of a, an advantage in doing that um certainly helps with search engine positions as well but you want to think carefully before you do that um, LinkedIn has only recently started to allow people to actually do that, uh, largely because a lot of people used to do this. They used to kind of abuse uh, the facility. So keep it simple, keep it professional, but don't abuse 
uh, that particular feature. Now, here's something brand new that's on LinkedIn. They're gradually rolling it out around the world. And you'll see that right next to your name is a little speaker. Um, LinkedIn has recently introduced this to help people. You can record, and you have to do this through the mobile version of LinkedIn, the correct pronunciation of your name. Uh, so that when you do have a Zoom meeting with them, or we do actually get to meet each other again face to face, they will know the correct pronunciation of your name. But guess what? They give you 10 seconds of audio. So you could do a little, uh, hi, my name's John Smith. I'm a professional financial advisor in Johannesburg. If I can introduce you to anybody, please let me know. You've got 10 seconds of audio. Isn't that great? So that's a brand new feature. You may or may not have it, uh, but you get access to it through the mobile device. Now, we move further down the profile and we get to the experience section. And the experience section is where you say where you work. Uh, but what a lot of people never bother to do is to fill in the detail. They just put their title, speaker, financial advisor, accountant, but they never bother to put any detail. You must put some detail in there. Guess what you've got to include in there? Keywords. But here's something else. It doesn't just have to be where you're working or where you used to work. It can be what you're doing. So maybe as a financial advisor, you are putting on a series of webinars or a series of seminars. You could actually add that in to your experience section as well. So that's something worth thinking about as well. Then you can add up to three different websites that if you've got, and you can put your Twitter and stuff in there. But what I want to show you there, there's my website, philipcalvert.com. But what most people don't have after their website is the words, is the bit of free text. In my case, book me to speak at your event. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually do that. It is an opportunity to get more keywords in there. So what you do is when you go into the edit section settings, when you add in your website, philipcalvert.com, on the right-hand side, it says something like company website, personal website, blog, and other. What you need to do is choose other, then it lets you add that bit of free text in there as well. So little tip, another way to get keywords in there. Something else you want to do? Show your birthday. Now, why would you want to do that? Do you get off on having people wish you happy birthday? Well, uh, my birthday, for those that you want to know, is November the 13th. It doesn't show you your year, but uh, the LinkedIn algorithm tells people when it's your birthday. And the last November the 13th, I had 426 people wish me happy birthday through LinkedIn. The vast majority of them just hit the ready-made button they give you. They didn't bother to personalize it, but still 400 odd people wished me happy birthday which gives me 426 opportunities to start a conversation. Thanks for saying happy birthday, Sue. How are you? How's business going? Can I introduce you to anyone? Is there anything I can help you with? Use the tools that LinkedIn give you to start conversations and to get things going. It is so, so important that you do this. LinkedIn will reward you for doing that, okay? Be proud, show off your profile. LinkedIn even gives you a little badge that you can put on your website or you can put it in your email signature as well. Um, if you go to that link on the left now, you will be getting a copy of uh, the video. Uh, in eight, I'm going to make sure that you get that. Uh, so that's not a problem. So go to that particular link there and they give you various badges. They even give you the code that you can drop that into your website or into your email signature. If you don't have to do that, your kids will do it for you. Don't worry too much about that but what i'm saying is be proud of your linkedin profile because it is valuable it is an asset of your business now now here's an interesting one so maybe i'm looking for a financial advisor financial planner so i've done my search and tom here has got his keyword strategy right and tom has shown up pretty well in my search results so i'm quite pleased with that and i can have a look at tom's profile but now, so this is a real screenshot of Tom's profile on LinkedIn, but I've actually blanked off something. Do any of you know what part of his profile I've covered up? Anybody know what that might be? Okay, I'll show you. Down the right-hand side of Tom's profile is a column that says, people also viewed. You've probably seen that, yeah? And down the right-hand side is a list of, guess what? Tom's competitors. Do you think Tom wants his competitors visible on his own profile? Of course he doesn't. 
So it may well be that whilst Tom's come off my search result, I'm now looking down the right hand side and I can see Sandy and I can see Liam and I can see David. And down the bottom there's Adam now. Adam's got letters after his name. And Tom is a financial planner. Adam seems to be a chartered financial planner. So maybe Adam's better. So maybe I'll go look at Adam's profile. Bye bye, Tom. Tom's lost the opportunity. So the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is you can switch off that facility so that people can't see your competitors. And again, you go into the uh, profile settings and there's a thing there that says, should we display views of this profile? So if you click no, and that will hide your competitors from their profile. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on to photos. Can't tell you how important these are. These are. I hope you're uh, enjoying this. I'm conscious that we're coming up on um, an hour. And Sid, feel free to drop off at this point. You'll still get your CPD. But uh, I've got lots, lots more for you, uh, including a couple of freebies. And don't forget the quiz question at the end. So I hope you'll stick with me for a little bit longer. So photos, so, so important. Caroline is a financial planner. She's uploaded a nice friendly photo. What do I do? I just put great photo Caroline. I mean, I know Caroline really well. Um, what do you think Caroline will do when I put great photo Caroline? Other than, other than block me. Now we get on like a house on fire. Caroline, it's an opportunity for Caroline. Go, oh, Phil, I haven't heard from you for a while. How are you? How's things? So we can have a conversation. But here's something else that will happen. If I put great photo Caroline, some people in Caroline's network will go, who's this Phil Calvert guy? And they'll look at my profile. So although I'm doing something genuine, genuinely saying great photo, Caroline, I also know that people will look at me as a result. And they're in my funnel, for want of a better word. So you must have a photo. If you haven't got a photo, you might as well leave now. All sorts of research has been done to show you haven't got a photo, no one's interested. People by people, remember? So important. So rules for photos. It needs to be friendly and professional and a few other things. So Emma here is a financial advisor. What do we think of Emma's profile photo? Well, Emma's a lovely lady, but I'd say that's not an ideal profile photo. Yeah, we need to be able to see the whites of her eyes. Adam, on the other hand, looking relaxed and friendly. Um, and here's an interesting thing that people do on LinkedIn. If we like the look of someone on LinkedIn, we have a tendency to click on their photo. Um, psychologists tell us that that's what we do. So LinkedIn knows this. And if you click on Adam's photo, it gets bigger. And I know right now, uh, profile photos, photos are circular, LinkedIn changes them all the time. So if you've not got an up to date photo on LinkedIn, you can now upload a fairly high definition up to eight megabytes, I think it is so that when people click on your photo, they can have a closer look at you. Andy, what do we think about his profile? It's not really ideal for LinkedIn. Yeah. But not really ideal for LinkedIn. This is a financial advisor. So I look further down her profile, I'm looking for why is she holding a snake? There's nothing on her profile to say she collects lizards and snakes. This is a financial advisor. Now, some people say that's not appropriate for a financial, but on the other side of the coin, there may be some people think, well, financial advisors, they, they wear suits and they're a bit stuffy. And, and, uh, but, and maybe this might be right for a particular market. What I'm trying to do is get across the point, you've got to choose a photo that's appropriate for your target market. Another financial advisor, yeah. Head of distribution at AXA in the UK. That's how he choose, chooses to uh, represent himself. I think he's retired now. This I rather suspect is not Vince, uh, head of business development at Prudential. So use a real photo. This is not a financial advisor, but this is a real LinkedIn profile that I've seen uh, somebody using. These are both financial advisors uh, on LinkedIn. So you, you get what I'm saying, yeah? You get what I'm saying. It's got to be friendly, professional, and it's got to be trustworthy as well. And this guy's on here as well. I, I collect funny LinkedIn profiles, are always worth a look. But I did decide to look closer just to see how this person had done his profile. And he had joined a group. You know, you can join groups on LinkedIn. Um, so he joined a group for wooden toy making. Now, there's a point to this madness. Groups are incredibly powerful on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to build relationships with accountants, there are 3,900 groups for accountants on LinkedIn, some of them with tens of thousands of members. 
you're interested in building relationships with lawyers and solicitors, thousands of groups on LinkedIn. If you're interested in golf, maybe you have a lot of clients who play golf because you play golf. There are 4,600 groups related to golf on LinkedIn, running, yoga, entrepreneurs, wine. If you type in South Africa into LinkedIn and search for groups, there are over 5,000 groups related to South Africa. Find the groups, get involved, add value within the groups. Don't sell within the groups. Just help people out, support people, offer to introduce people, and slowly but surely they will start to look at you. So just an example here, a quick screenshot um, of some of the groups. The South Africa Business Community, 67,000 members. East Africa Business Community, 46,000 members. Johannesburg Business Network, 22,000 members in there. These are all people who have got something in common and having something in common with people is one of the most uh, valuable things that you can use on LinkedIn. Type in Johannesburg. 22,000 members in one group, 4,000 in another, 2,000 in another. It goes on, it goes on. Now, back to the photos. If you do have a distinctive photo, and this is a real photo, this guy runs a Lexus dealership in the centre of London. His whole his passion in life is the outdoor world. He loves hiking, climbing, walking, mountaineering, and he's put that in his profile. He's written it. My passion in life is the outdoor life. And that's why he's got that photo. It only needs one person who's looking to buy a Lexus or a fleet of Lexuses who also enjoys the outside world. They'll hook onto him, yeah? They've got something in common. They won't go look at anybody else's profile. Talk about yourself. Get across your passions and share that through professional photos. So learn from the experts. Jeff, the boss at LinkedIn, his photo, friendly and professional, yeah? Dara, the CEO at Uber, friendly and professional. Melanie, head of strategy at Google, friendly and professional. And this guy, this guy I found on LinkedIn, friendly and professional. Okay, so one of the things we also do with our photos, and this is really, really important, we, we have a tendency to, when we upload a photo, we, we try and look competent, we try and look confident not quite sure how we do that but in actual fact that's not what people are looking for remember i mentioned earlier there are complete strangers searching for your expertise on linkedin right now they're not looking for confidence they're not looking for competence what they're looking for is trustworthiness above everything else this is what the psychologists tell us it is believed the only reason we shake hands is to uh, prove that we're not concealing a weapon so ideally, we're looking for trustworthiness. So one technique to get across trustworthiness in LinkedIn profile photos is if you can show the palms of your hands. So if you've got a photo, maybe a photo of you doing a presentation or working with a client, if you can show the palms of your hands, that makes you look much more trustworthy. Simple point. I mentioned we could add media to your photos. This is so, so powerful. Um, because some people, they don't want to read your stuff, yeah? They'd rather look at pretty pictures. So add all sorts of pictures and images to your profile, uh, to your experience sections. And, you know, it makes a big difference to the number of profile views. Um, when I added those two photos there, the first time that LinkedIn allowed you to do this, this is what happened to my profile views. So use the features that LinkedIn gives you, and they will reward you by getting more profile views. Types of media, I mean, one of the best things you could do is infographics. Infographics are really powerful. They explain complicated financial uh, things in pictures, which people like. So a financial advisor, I think it was a mortgage advisor in the United States. I mean, he could have written a blog or an article about how to improve your credit score, but he did it in the form of an infographic. And a great tool for infographics, go to Canva, canva.com, I think it is ready-made templates that you can use, drag and drop. You don't need to be a professional graphic artist to do this stuff. Use the tools that LinkedIn gives you and they will reward you. Another tool they give you is the big, big image at the top of um, your profile. This is free to use. You know, everything I've talked about today on Link about LinkedIn is free to use. You don't need premium membership. We'll touch on that a little bit later. Branding opportunity. If I profess to be a speaker, then I'm going to have a picture of me speaking at an event. And funnily enough, as coincidence would have it, that was uh, an event for financial advisors in South Africa. 
You could also add some text as well. Go to Canva, take the image, and just type it on top. Uh, gives you another opportunity. Pete is a financial planner in the United Kingdom. He has a YouTube channel. He's also uh, does some podcasts as well. So he uses the big picture, the big space at the top, just to get across that another aspect of what he does. Upload photos, in particularly LinkedIn likes you to use uh, the mobile app to upload photos. So when I was speaking in India at a conference, uh, they had an elephant outside. You've got to have a selfie with an elephant. And I upload that. I put some keywords in the status update as well. So it's things that you're doing, day-to-day -day activities, they don't need to be about personal finance. They need to be about you, your life, so that people can bind to you as an individual, as a person. But LinkedIn likes you to upload photos to LinkedIn through the mobile. They reward you by making your image images more visible. Okay, let's move further down the profile and start looking at the, the main body of text. Now, uh, a nice technique to do is because none of us are professional copywriters, uh, so bullet points are a nice, simple way to get text into your profile. Simple bullet points, and here's an example. I mean, this guy's just gone over the top with his bullet points, but it's clear, we can see at a glance what he does. Neat layout, no waffle. Tina, however, she's a financial planner in North London. She's not gone for bullet points, but Tina knows the LinkedIn game. Now, let me shine my forensic torch on what she's written. And what can we see there? Keywords. One of her main keywords is financial planning. She's got financial planning in there one, two, three times, four times in the first paragraph and the first line. Now, why is the first paragraph? When Google comes to visit LinkedIn profiles, it doesn't look below the first paragraph of your summary section. It looks at your name, it looks at your picture, it looks at your professional headline, and it looks at about the first paragraph of your summary. So get your main keywords, remember those top five I talked about? Get them in the top paragraph or the first few bullet points of your profile so that they get picked up by Google. Volunteering causes. This is a, a little section of LinkedIn profiles that not everybody knows is there, but it's really important. And it's really important because more and more of us these days purchase products and services based on our perception of a company or an individual's ethical credentials. So on your LinkedIn profile, there is a whole section where you can put in content and uh, information about what you care about. And LinkedIn divides those into different types. So animal welfare, poverty, politics, humanitarian relief. Just if that's something that you care about. Now, say you care about the environment and you've got that on your LinkedIn profile. You only need one person who's looking for a financial advisor in your area who also cares about the environment and you've got that thing in common. That's how this works. It's really powerful. So the vast majority of people are not using this, this LinkedIn section. Use it. Guess what? LinkedIn will reward you. Martin is a financial planner. He's down the road from me here. And although Martin is really good at internet marketing, he really focuses his LinkedIn profile on local volunteer experiences. So the local park run, the local uh, flower, Cranley and Bloom, Cranley Chamber of Commerce. So Put your volunteer experience onto your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn will reward you. Then we have the skills section. Now, this is a fairly clunky section. However, it has real value if you use it because when people are using the search engine, LinkedIn, the algorithm looks at the words in your skill section. So there are various types of skills that you can put onto your LinkedIn profile. I think you can have 50 different skills. So all those keywords that you, that you brainstormed earlier, they can go straight into your skills section as well. And people can give you a quick and dirty um, reward. They just, you know, they, they, they rank you, they rate you. So if I choose one of my skills that I put in there is motivational speaking, about 100 people have, have endorsed me for that. And I can then have a look and see who's actually endorsed me. Now, what do you think would be a good thing for me to do if Ian there or Robert there endorses me for motivational speaking? Yeah, the answer is say thank you. Do you know that 99.99% of people never bother to say thank you when somebody endorses them? What do you think happens when you say thank you to someone? Hi, Ian, thank you so much for endorsing me for motivation. What do you think happens? Guess what? A conversation starts. 
that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to interact and engage with people at a human level so we can get conversations going. So important. What about art? What skills has he put on his LinkedIn profile? He's put invisible to women. He's put more patient than I should be with people who are stupid. But what we can actually see that his real skill is sales, yeah? Um, and I love the, the fact that 17 people actually have endorsed him for being invisible to him. So what Art is doing there, he's continuing the human, the self-deprecating humor throughout his LinkedIn profile. Okay, so what do we do now? We've done all the hard work. Our profile is set up. What happens next? For most financial advisors, the object of the exercise now is to focus on getting profile views. Let's get them coming to have a look at us. And it's important to remember that no one ever visits our profile by accident. They always do it on purpose. You do any of these things on LinkedIn, it could result in somebody looking at your LinkedIn profile. So, you know, if you like a copy of these slides, just drop me a line or make sure you get a copy of the slides. But print this one off and pin it up in front of you. Do any of these things, and there's a few other things actually as well, you will get profile reviews, profile views. So some of the main activities, and I, we haven't got time to go through all of these. I just want to touch on one of them. These are the main things that, that, that work and that get people looking at your profile right now. Story-based status updates, I'll give you an example. Video status updates, commenting on other people's content, commenting on highly niche content, commenting in groups, live streaming video on a company page. If you've got a company page, live streaming video is incredible for getting profile views. Audio messages and video messages. Let's touch on a couple of those. So voice messaging. Usually most people will send you a message on LinkedIn. They'll send you a text-based message through the messaging tool. That's probably what you do when you talk to other people. But you can actually send, vo you can send an audio message. Do you think that'll make you stand out from the crowd? Of course it will. You can also send video messages as well. So start, start doing that. Hi, John. Hi, Sue. Thanks for taking a look at my profile. Hope you found something of interest. Let me know if I can introduce you any, to anyone who can help you in your business. Send that as an audio message rather than a written message. LinkedIn Live, I talked about live streaming video. It is incredibly powerful. You have to apply for this. There's a form on LinkedIn which you apply for this and once they let you do that. Once you start doing this, companies that are using this, their profile views just go off the scale. Why? Because this is new and LinkedIn reward you for using it. Simple as that. Okay, you've got to know your numbers. LinkedIn gives you some really valuable numbers which you've got to look at. Now, let me ask you a question. If I was to say I could give you the names and addresses of everybody who looks at your website, would you find that useful? Of course you would. Well, I can't quite give you that, but I can give you the next best thing. LinkedIn gives you six sets of data. How many people viewed your profile, what they do, where they work, what they typed into the search box, who looked at your profile, that's the magic one, and who followed you. They actually show you who looked at your profile. This set of stats, this, these stats are available 24 seven, seven days a week, but they update it on a Monday usually. And they show you some pretty graphs to show you what you've been up to over the time. But here's the thing. Occasionally they send you some other ones. And this is something I received. It said, Philip, you've shown up in search results 70 times in the last three days. So that's telling me, okay, uh, I think I've got my keyword strategy right. But what's more important is 12 of them actually looked at my profile. So let me ask you, what do you think I should do next? What do you think I should do next? Say thank you. Yeah, guess what? 99.99% of people never bother to say thank you to someone when you look at their profile. Do you think that'd be a good idea? Imagine somebody walked into your office off the street and you just ignored them, you blanked them. How would they feel about that? No, you'd say, hi, how are you? Thanks for coming in today. Guess what happens when you say thank you to people for looking at your profile? A conversation starts. This is how it works, guys. Say thank you. As far as I'm concerned, this is the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn, the ability to see who looked at your profile. Now, if you're on the free version of LinkedIn, you can see the last five people that looked at your profile. If you've got any of the premium versions of LinkedIn, you can see the last 90 days worth of people. I have premium LinkedIn. I happen to think that LinkedIn premium is quite expensive for what you get. However, 
to me, I have premium membership of LinkedIn for one reason and one reason alone. It's so I can look at who's looked at my profile. So I can say, thank you. I can start a conversation for that reason and that reason alone. And it pays for itself a thousand times over. I've had financial advisors say to me, the very first time they said thank you to someone to look at their look at their profile, they ended up with a valuable new client. So remember that one. Now I, we're, we're starting to uh, wrap up, but I'm going to show you a couple of advanced things now, which are amazing, which really bring this whole LinkedIn thing together, all these tools we've been talking to. The gentleman on the left there is Thomas Power. He is a, a global networker. He can introduce you to pretty well anyone you want. Now, Thomas invented the world's first B2B social networking platform called Academy that I mentioned right at the beginning. Thomas invented the, the profile, the profile that we all see on all the social media. He invented it, it was his idea. And Thomas teaches people how to network. And one of the things he was really passionate about is showing the you side of it. Forget your technical skills, to forget your expertise, show what you love. Now, Thomas loves wine. He collects corks. Last time I was at his house, he's got a room where you're like wading through corks. And when he really talks about it, people always laugh about this. When he does networking training, he tells people he collects corks and people always go, he's one of those sad guys that collects corks. And he says, just out of interest, does anyone here like Manchester United? And there's always a few people, that, does anybody here like running? A few people put their hands up. He goes, okay, fine. Um, and then he carries on with his presentation. But the next break, the coffee break, at the corner of his eye, he watched to see what happens. Guess what? The Manchester United people get slowly closer and closer together to the coffee machine. The people who like running get closer and closer to the coffee machine and the people who collect corks come together at the coffee machine. Where you have something in common with somebody else, you naturally are drawn to them. That's why you need to get personal stuff on your LinkedIn profile. So how could we use this to attract clients? Tina, I showed you earlier, is a financial planner in North London. And now I'm gonna show you now an old version of LinkedIn. You used to be able to just type out your personal interests. You can't do that anymore, but you can still do it in another way. Tina is Greek, okay? And in her interest, she's got the, the instrument bazooki. And I said, Tina, what's the biggest issue in your business right now that you're trying to solve? She said, to find the right sort of financial planners to work with me. And I said, okay, pick a word, in your interests and I'll find you someone. She said, okay, bazooki. So we click on the word bazooki. LinkedIn then searches for the word bazooki and it finds, I can't quite see, but there's quite a few people on LinkedIn have got the word bazooki on their profile. The algorithm arranges them in order of relevance to her. So she comes up top of the list and guess what? Immediately under her name, Paul Burns, financial advisor in Cyprus, which just happens to be where Tina was born. Now, if you're a financial advisor, you are well aware that recruiters like to talk to you on LinkedIn. Do you think if Tina wanted to talk to Paul with a view to recruiting him, do you think he's going to be particularly open to a message a connection request that has no relevance to him? Of course he's not. But what's happening here is they've got several things in common. They've both got bazooki on their profile. They've both got relevance to Greece, because Tina's Greece, yeah? They're both financial advisors. She could start a conversation with him that's guaranteed to end up in a coffee shop, guaranteed. Now, I've done this myself. I do a bit of kickboxing. So I mentioned earlier that um, I, I speak at conferences. So maybe I want to speak uh, at, a, at a bank conference. Banks are big, okay? I can sell all the books there. So I type kickboxing into the search box. LinkedIn finds me 50,000 people who've got kickboxing on their LinkedIn profile. There's a lot of kickboxing instructors. I don't want an instructor. I've already got one. So what I now do is I hit the um, filters and I filter the results. And I filter it by London and financial services. LinkedIn redoes the search on kickboxing and it finds me 128 people who work in financial services in London who've got kickboxing on their profile. And this one catches my eye, Rui. He works at Barclays. Now I'm sure he's not the guy that arranges the conference for the annual sales conference at Barclays, but he's my way in. So what I now do is I have a look at his profile. 
turns out he's fairly hardcore when it comes to martial arts, but he's my way in. So what message do you think I should send to Rui? Do you think I should send him this? Do you know 99% of people don't even send that? So I don't send him that. What I do send him is highly customized message. I'll send him something like, do you want to fight? Blah, blah, blah. That's how I get in. Do you think he'll respond to that? Of course he has. Of course he has. And yes, we've had that coffee. We've sat down in there. We talk about kickboxing. We talk about martial arts. And I don't go, can you introduce me to the conference organizer of Barclays? I wait for him to ask me because at some point he'll turn around and say, I'm interested. what do you do, Phil? And then we get talking. This is how we do it. We'll look for things where we've got in common. We send highly personalized messages and we take it from there. That's how we do it. I've also done it with yoga as well. I type in yoga into the search box. Yeah, I do a bit of yoga. It gives me 657,000 people. Lots of them are yoga teachers. I then hit the filters. United Kingdom event services. In other words, I'm looking for conference organizers who do yoga. It then finds me 400 people who just happen to do yoga and who book speakers for conferences. That's how you find people. And I can talk to, I can send a message to all 420 of those and I'll guarantee you I'll get a reply if I customize the message enough. People by people always have done and always will. Status updates. I'll do a little bit on this. It's all about the algorithm. You've got to post stuff that says you are a networker and not a broadcaster. Um, and the algorithm looks at what's called dwell time. In other words, how long people look at your posts for. They also look at the amount of engagement it gets, likes, comments, shares, and so on. And sometimes they'll give it a manual boost. If all you do is you go onto LinkedIn and say, check out my latest blog, LinkedIn will penalize it. Far better, and I mean, this sort of thing as well. Book an appointment with our advisors online. They don't want that kind of stuff. They don't want that kind of stuff at all. So don't put it. Yeah, and far too many financial advisors do. This is the worst type of post that you could put. Uh, check out my latest blog, click here, and there's a link. And I mean, what the LinkedIn algorithm sees there is, is you inviting someone to leave LinkedIn. They don't want you to do that. They want you to add value to the community, yeah? So tell stories. Uh, you want to try and avoid images unless you do it through, through the mobile app. Don't put links. Do comment on other people's posts. Do include some hashtags. And if you can, put in some video as well. If you want to do articles on LinkedIn, you used to be able to put any old rubbish on there. These days, for an article to be successful, it's going to be decent. It's going to be long, detailed, heavy-duty research, unique insights. So if that's your thing, go ahead and use articles. But for most people, uh, it's a lot of hard work to do that. This is the ideal post. A journalist friend of mine um, was working in London, the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. He came out of his shift. Someone had nicked his bike. And he just recorded this as a video on his mobile on his mobile phone. So it's got emotion in there and it grabs people's attention. There's a certain amount of curiosity. Um, it's got some hashtag. That's that's almost the perfect post on LinkedIn. Yeah. A little bit of curiosity, a little bit of human interest going on, some emotion, really powerful. This is one one of my one of the best ones I ever did was I was going to speak in Bulgaria and I hadn't booked my parking at the airport. Uh, I still got a few errands that I needed to do. And I went onto the Gatwick Airport car park site and I was quoted 27 pounds. And I thought, okay, fine. So I went down to get a haircut. I went to the post office, came back to book it and the price had gone up. That is a status update. It got me 1200 likes, 227 comments and 23 people wrote to me. Nothing about, well, vaguely about speaking. None of it says book me, book me, book me. It just says something about my life. A mistake I made, if you like, yeah? And people love that kind of stuff. Simple human stories gets results. And if you wanna, you, you know, you can also pull the sort of Facebook trick as well and go for the cute animals. Max here has posted a picture of his dog, 1700 likes, 227 people got nothing better to do with their time than to comment on that. Yes, that stuff works on LinkedIn. And I know some of the people come out and say, oh, this isn't appropriate for LinkedIn. Actually, it is appropriate for LinkedIn because it gets comments, it gets you attention. This guy here, Nick, he runs a Bentley dealership and he says you can use three words to describe this green Bentley. 
1,300 people commented on it. I guarantee you a lot of people will look at his profile as well. This one, Asda, the big department store, uh, grocery store in the UK. Emily, who's HR director. This was, this was a big one. She says here, this is Patrick. He's 86. He stopped me in Leeds in the north of England yesterday to ask me about my day. He asked if I had any chance time for coffee. I cancelled my meetings. I spent two hours with him. Marvellous. Look at that. 230,000 likes. 11,000 comments. Now, I would imagine that Asda's got some fairly tight social media policies, and she probably broke a few there, yeah? But it's a human interest story, and she did wonders for her brand by telling a human interest story. People by people. This is what it's about. Nothing to do with technology. People by people. Richard, a speaker friend of mine, he's now doing video status updates on a regular basis. He's getting tons and tons of views all the time. Hashtags, uh, before, we, before we wrap up, let me just show you how to do this. Go to the search box and type in a hashtag related to your expertise. Maybe mortgages, yeah? It shows you 469,000 results. Click the follow button. When you click the follow button, you send a signal to the LinkedIn algorithm that mortgages is a topic that you're interested in. You can also do it with pensions. You can do it with investments. Just type in hashtag pensions, hashtag investments. Click the follow button. The algorithm now knows you want to see content related to this. And it will then show you content related to those topics. And your job now, as I've mentioned before, all you need to do is just comment on it. Great post, Sue. Thanks for the heads up. Hashtag mortgages. Thanks for your post, Mike. Have you read John's book about it? Highly recommended. Hashtag financial bank. That's all you need to do. Comment on other people's stuff. Guess what will happen? LinkedIn algorithm spots that you are a networker and not a broadcaster. And as a result, will put you higher in the search results. Easy when you know how, guys. So just to sum up, be clear about who you're targeting. Write your profile so it appeals to your perfect client. And even if you're not actually expecting your perfect clients to get in touch, the people who are not quite your perfect um, clients, your profile will appeal to them as well. Yeah, Know them inside out. Know their problems. Know their worries. And prove that you know that through your profile. Have a plan. Yeah, I mentioned that right at the beginning. Play to the LinkedIn algorithm. In other words, be a networker, not a broadcaster. Include the keywords in there and start conversations with people. Thank people for looking at your profile. Do all that good stuff. It's so powerful. So the plan bit is super important. Have a plan. Have a strategy. You saw the example of my plan. Copy it. Treat LinkedIn as an asset of your business now. Stop looking at it as some social networking platform that somebody told you you ought to be using. Just another bit of technology. Treat it as an asset of your business. And be like Ernest. Be like my grandfather. Remember that people buy people. So, so important because that is what LinkedIn is about. It's about people. It's nothing to do with technology. So, if you would like to get a free LinkedIn health check and a free LinkedIn planner that you can fill out, download it, go to linkedinsuccess.score app. Uh, it asks you some questions and it'll give you a score. Don't be shocked about your score because it will give you some ideas, areas for, for improvement. That's my first freebie today. It will tell you how you are using LinkedIn and it'll give you some ideas which you can build on what we've been talking about today. Next. If you would like to consider your own personal situation, our good friends in a are offering a, an in-depth roundtable session with me where we can look at in specific issues relating to your business. And it will be like consultancy. There will be a very limited number of people could do this, very limited number of people. Um, so we can do a consultancy type approach to you. Um, so if you're working directly with me one-to-one -one in a really, really small group, go to that link on the top there. There's a couple of questions there. You have to apply for this, okay? And it would be absolutely fantastic to see one or two of you um, on this particular, and we'll tell you about the date for that um, later on um, if you apply for that. So if you want some attention that looks closely and in-depth at uh, issues related to LinkedIn, uh, and possibly wider marketing that directly relates to your business, then please go to that and apply for that. 
um, and hopefully we'll see you on that call. So the quiz that I mentioned right at the very beginning. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I've got various books on LinkedIn, but I have written a brand new book that comes out next week. And I'm going to, if you can answer this question, send me the answer to this question here. What is the single biggest mistake the financials make on LinkedIn? I will send you the first copy that comes off uh, the presses and I will send you that. It's a proper book, not a PDF or anything like that. I will send you the very first copy. It comes out next week, um, middle of next week, something like that. And you'll get the very first copy. Um, it is a lot of what we've covered today, plus a built-in planner as well. You actually write in the book and I will send you a copy of that. I'll sign it for you as well. Uh, so what is the single biggest mistake that financial advisors make on LinkedIn? Send your answer to philip at financialadvice.marketing. Um, and the correct, uh, I'll put all the correct answers into a draw and we'll pick one out and you will get that particular prize. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much. I see a great many of you have stayed uh, the distance, which is superb. If you have any questions, just feel free to write to me. In8 will be getting in touch with you uh, to follow up so you can get a copy of this video um, and I'm sure some more. So thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to meeting you another time. Thanks again.